Welcome, welcome every guest. Welcome to our music fest. Music is our only cheer. Fills both soul and ravish cheer. Sacred muse teach us the road. Sweetest notes to be explored. Sweetly swells the trembling air to complete our concert fair. Welcome, welcome every guest. Welcome to our music fest. Music is our only cheer. Feels both soul and ravish dear. Sacred muse teach us the road. Sweetest notes to be explored. Sweetly swells the trembling air to complete our concert fair. Time with Good Company, also known as the King's Ballade, was one of Henry VIII's most popular and well-known pieces. It was in the Henry VIII songbook published around the year 1518. This song deals with aspects of the court, hunting, singing, and dancing. It is one of the most popular songs of the period, and it was popular not only in England, but throughout Europe. So here is to Chatty and to his right cheek. Pray God send our master a good piece of a beef and a good piece of beef that may we all see. With the wassailing bowl, we'll drink to thee. Wassail, wassail all over the town. Our toast it is white and our ale it is brown. Our bowl it is made of the white maple tree. With our wassailing bowl, we'll drink to thee. 
So here is to Dobbin and to his right eye. Pray God send our master a good cherry pie and a good cherry pie that may we all see. With our wassailing bowl, we'll drink to thee. Wassail, wassail, all over the town. Our toast, it is white, and our ale, it is brown. Our bowl, it is made of the white maple tree. With our wassailing bowl, we'll drink to thee. Well, here is to broad may and to her broad horn. May God send our master a good crop of corn and a good crop of corn that may we all see. With the wassailing bowl, we'll drink to thee. Wassail, wassail, all over the town. Our toast it is white and our rail it is brown. Our bowl it is made of the white maple tree. With the wassailing bowl, we'll drink to thee. And here is to Phil Pell and to her left ear. Pray God send our master a happy new year and a happy new year as ere he did see. With our wassailing bowl, we'll drink to thee. Wassail, wassail, all over the town. Our toast, it is white, and our rail, it is brown. Our bowl, it is made of a white maple tree. With the wassailing bowl, we'll drink to thee. And here is to Carly and to her long tail. Pray God send our master, he never may fail. A bowl of strong cheer, I pray you draw near. And our jolly wassail, which then you shall hear. Come, butler, come, fill us a bowl of the best. Then we hope that your soul in heaven may rest. But if you do draw with the bone of the small, then down shall go butler, bowl, and all. Then here's to the maid in the lily white smock, who tripped to the door and slips back the lock. Who tripped to the door and pulled back the pin, for to let these jolly wassailers in. Wassail, wassail, all over the town. Our toast, it is white, and our ale, it is brown. Our bowl, it is made of the white maple tree. With the wassailing bowl, we'll drink to thee. Wassail! May we always look forward with pleasure and backwards with regret. May we live to learn well, and learn to live well. Wassail! May our lives, like the leaves of the maple, grow more beautiful as they fade. May we say our farewells when it's time to go, all smiling and unafraid. Wassail! Here's to the present, and away with the past. A health to the future, and joy to the last. Wassail! May our lives, like the leaves of maple, grow more beautiful as they fade. May we say our farewell when it's time to go, all smiling and unafraid. May our feast days be many, and our fast days be few. Speak the speech, I pray you, as I pronounced it to you, trippingly on the tongue. But if you mouth it as many of your players do, I had as least the town crier spoke my lines. Nor do not saw the air too much with your hands thus, but use all gently. For in the very torrent, tempest, and, as I may say, whirlwinds of passion, you must acquire and get a temperance that may give it smoothness. Oh, it offends me to the soul to hear a robustious, periwig pated fellow tear a passion to tatters, to very rags, to split the ears of the groundlings, who, for the most part, are incapable of anything but inexplicable dumb shows and noise. It out Herod's Herod. Pray you avoid it. Who will believe my verse in time to come, if it were filled with your most high deserts? Though yet heaven knows, 
It is but as tomb which holds your life and shows not half your parts. If I could write the beauty of your eyes and in fresh numbers number all your graces, the age would come to say, this poet lies, such heavenly touches near touched earthly faces. So should my papers, yellowed with their age, be scorned like old men of less truth than tongue, and your true rights be termed a poet's rage, and stretched meter of an antique song. But were some child of yours alive at that time, you should live twice, and in my rhyme. To be or not to be, that is the question. Whether tis nobler in the mind to suffer the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune, or to take arms against a sea of troubles and by opposing end them. To die to sleep no more, and by a sleep to say we end the heartache and the thousand natural shocks that flesh is heir to. Tis a consummation devoutly to be wished. To die to sleep, to sleep perchance to dream. Ay, there's the rub, for in that sleep of death what dreams may come when we have shuffled off this mortal coil must give us pause. There's the respect that makes calamity of so long a life. Shall I compare thee to a summer's day? Thou art more lovely and more temperate. Rough winds do shake the darting buds of May, and summer's lease hath all too short to date. Sometimes too hot the eye of heaven shines, and often is his golden complexion dimmed, and every fair from fair sometime declines. By chance or nature's changing course I'm trimmed, but thy eternal summer shall not fade, nor lose possession of that fair thou oust. Nor shall death brag thou wanderest in his shade, when in eternal lines to time thou grow'st, so long as men can breathe or eyes can see, so long lives this, and this gives life to thee. Oh, she doth teach the torches to burn bright. It seems she hangs upon the cheek of night like a rich jewel in an Ethiop's ear. Beauty too rich for use, for earth too dear. So shows a snowy dove trooping with crows as yonder lady or her fellow shows. The measure done, I'll watch her place of stand and touching hers make blessed my rude hand. Did my heart love till now forswear it, sight, for I ne'er saw true beauty till this night. Once long ago, on a bright sunny day, lived a mouse. There were three. Well, three. Anyway, they lived on a farm. A farm. On a farm near a wood that was run by a man and his wife. Three blind mice. Three blind mice. See how they run. See how they run. They all ran after the farmer's wife. She cut their tails with his carving knife. Did you ever see such a sight in your life? As three blind mice. Poor little mouse. Not a thing could he see. Not a thing. There were three. Well, three. Could not see. There were three. Not one, but three was a sound. That was run by a man. And his wife. Three blind mice. Three blind mice. See how they run, see how they run. They all ran after the farmer's wife. She cut their tails with a carving knife. Did you ever see such a sight in your life? As three blind mice, three blind mice. Poor blind mouse, poor blind mouse. Not a thing could he see. Though he tried to escape When there were three Now there were two Now there were two Two blind mice with no tail 
tales to tell of their corn. We shall remember them well. We shall remember them well. Three blind mice, three blind mice. See how they run, see how they run. They all ran after the farmer's wife. She cut their tails with a carving knife. Did you ever see such a sight in your life? As three blind mice. Three blind mice. Three blind mice. Ta la 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 Mice. Mark Dwayne once said he had known a lot of troubles in his life, and most of them never happened. We imagine many of our fears into existence. To avoid foolish cowardice, refrain from too much mountain making out of mulchills. Courage, said Plateau, is knowing what's a fear. Chicken Little was in the woods one day when an acorn fell on her head. It scared her so much she trembled all over. She shook so hard half her feathers fell out. Oh, help! The sky is falling! She cried. So she ran in great fright to tell the king. Along the way, she met Henny Penny. Where are you going, Chicken Little? Oh, I saw it with my own eyes and heard it with my own ears and a part of it fell on my head. This is terrible, just terrible. We better run. So they ran away as fast as they could. Soon they met Ducky Lucky. Where are you going, Chicken Little and Henny Penny? The sky! The, the, sky the sky is falling! The sky is falling! We're going, We're going to, to tell, tell the king. king! How do you know? I saw it with my own eyes and heard it with my own ears and part of it fell on my head! Oh dear, oh dear, we better run. So they all ran down the road as fast as they could. Soon they met Goosey Lucy waddling along the roadside. Where are you all going in such a hurry? We're running for our lives! The sky is falling, and we're running to tell the king. How do you know the sky is falling? I saw it with my own eyes and heard it with my own ears and part of it fell on my head. Goodness. And they all ran in great fright across a meadow. Before long, they met Turkey Lurkey, struggling back and forth. Hello there, Chicken Little, Henny Penny, Ducky Lucky, and Goosey Lucy. Where are you all going in such a hurry? Help! Help! We're running for our lives! The sky is falling. And we're running to tell the king. How do you know the sky is falling? I saw it with my own eyes and heard it with my own ears and a part of it fell on my head. Oh dear, I always suspected the sky would fall someday. I'd better run with you. So they all ran all their might until they met Foxy Loxy. Well, well, where are you rushing on such a fine day? Help, help! The sky is falling! I must go tell the king! How do you know the sky is falling? Help! Help! I saw it with my own eyes and heard it with my own ears and part of it fell on my head. I see. Well then, follow me. I'll show you the way to the king. So Foxy Loxy led Chicken Little, Henny Penny, Ducky Lucky, Goosey Lucy, and Turkey Lurkey across a field and through the woods. He led them straight at it to his den, and they never saw the king to tell him the sky was falling.
A finger should not sink through his nose. He must not stammer, lest he be incomprehensible. He must not push with his tongue or lisp, else one will hardly understand half of what he says. He also should not close his teeth together or nor, nor open his mouth too wide, nor stretch his tongue out over his lips, nor thrust his lips upward, nor distort his mouth, nor disfigure his cheeks and nose like the long-tailed monkey, nor crumple his eyebrows together, nor wrinkle his forehead, nor roll his head or the eye stir around and round, nor wink with the same, nor tremble with his lips. Friend, when you are a dancing, be careful not to belch, for if you belch, then you will be a pig. Furthermore, never pass wind when you are dancing. It is necessary to have a refined agility and physical style. Note that this agility and style under no circumstances should be taken to extremes. Rather, maintain the mean of your movements that is not too small nor too little. With smoothness appear like a gondola, the said waves right with slowness and with quickness. Avoid the streams of the foreigner from the countryside and of him who is traveling entertainer.
and all lost repel. For shall I change my love for a fine bond to depart? And in my reason prove I can command my heart. But if she will pity my desire, With the power of rap, he banished the demons. He's one heck of a chap. He has one flaw, so listen up close. He holds a record, yeah, he beats the most. Finally, she's making contact with the last member of the KC pack. This dragon so fierce, with her claws and scales, don't doubt her skills, please heed her tales. We can roast our foes like a barbecue, mix up pine meal like roast beef stew. She may be clumsy with literal poise, but our girl has one rich voice. Come on, squire, take it to the fair.
All Too Soon talks about a person that leaves their home to go somewhere new. They might have left their home because they're looking for opportunity. All Too Soon to me means a lot because, well, my family was from Thailand, I was from Thailand, so our life there wasn't a life we wanted, so we moved to the United States instead, and we had a better life here. You know, Hispanics, a lot of my um, people I know who are part of my culture are very, um, like, we, they moved here because they wanted a better life. I feel like someone can leave their home through, like, other people or people that they, that they don't know because, like, they either, like, need, feel like they need to, like, get out and, like, go, like, have new experiences. There are many reasons why someone would want to leave their home in the real world. But no matter the reason, it's always all too soon. No one's in doubt that the children singing All too soon shall be women and men And the bonny new land that we shaped with our hand It'll roll to the ocean again tale we're bringing can't turn time back to where he was then for the old ways they change but the new is so strange will it ever be simple again no one's in doubt that the children singing Soon shall be women and men, and the canny old land that we never could command, and it'll roll to the ocean again. Grandma was in the war, and when he came back to the ocean, he had a bride at all who had no English but yes and no.
we never could command, it will roll to thee.